So my wife works for a literacy charity and they work with young people across some of the most deprived areas in the UK, building their confidence, self-esteem and communication skills using creative writing workshops and school residentials and all that sort of stuff. In short, she has a very important job doing very important work with people who need it the most. In the past, the kids who come to the weekend workshops have done a huge range of projects. They've made a board game, a graphic novel, a radio drama that was actually aired on the BBC, even a six-part soap opera. And some of the kids who are regulars at the weekend workshops have been getting into D&D and asked to do something around designing their own tabletop role-playing game. It's been a popular idea and the kids were really keen to give it their own spin, so my wife's work just said yes, they are child-led, that's one of their principles, they do whatever the kids want to do. The problem is, none of the people who work there know anything about tabletop role-playing games, so I volunteered to do some consultancy for them, and they arranged a meeting, and I sat on a Zoom call looking at a sea of blank faces as I started to talk them through the basics of what tabletop role-playing games are and what they do, and yeah... They didn't get it. So I said, you know what? How about next week? Why don't you come over to our house? I'll cook some food and I will run a game for you to play. And then you'll get it. And I think in a moment of relief and desperation, they said yes. So I decided to run something for them. And that something was a game called Quest. Now Quest is a game I originally heard about on Dicebreaker where the review of it said... It was a great game to introduce new players to tabletop role-playing games, and it was also great for kids. So I figured that this fit the bill pretty well. The rule book is free from the Quest website, and I'll pop a link in the description below if you want to grab one, and I thoroughly recommend you do. I downloaded it and gave it a read, and was instantly sold. The book is beautiful, and the art is wonderful, fresh, modern takes on classic fantasy tropes. And that is kind of what the book and the game actually is. It's a fresh breezy take on the classic tabletop role-playing game. The classes, or roles as they are called here, are all ones you'll recognise. It uses a d20 like some other famous dungeon game. But crucially, it folds in more modern, narrative-based ideas into its gameplay. And the book is written exactly how you'd expect for new players, and it breaks it down elegantly and simply, talking you through how the game works from the perspective of the players, and also the GM, or guide as they are known here. And I, I know this is mentioned in practically every review of the game, but the way this is all laid out in the contents is just mwah, chef's kiss. Just look at how nice this is. The game is low prep and uses some really neat world building tools. I asked all of my players to pick a role, but that was all I asked them to do ahead of time. We did the rest on the night. It's real easy with Quest because the world building and character creation uses this kind of fill in the blanks sort of Mad Lib system, which is really accessible and a really great way of getting people into the world and their characters quickly. And to fill in these blanks on the sheets, you can put anything you want, but there's also a whole bunch of options to pick from if you just want to get into it. And for the world building, that's exactly what I did. Ordinarily, I would want this to be a collaborative process, but because I was taking newbies through this experience, I completed the world building worksheet the night before using a bunch of the pre-written prompts, keeping it nice and simple, setting up an adventure in a frontier town run by a merchant guild where fortune seekers looking for a recently fallen star have not been seen for many days. Off the back of that, I spent about an hour prepping this adventure, I'd say, uh, I drew a quick map of the town and made some notes about a handful of locations and notable NPCs and just sort of kind of sketched in some details. I then came up with a hook and then a loose structure for the adventure with everything that you would expect to find in such a thing. I, I wanted these newbies to experience some classic situations, so I had some investigations, some social encounters, a big inciting incident, then a puzzle, a combat encounter, then a denouement. And this was actually a really nice exercise for me. I haven't actually run a game for other people since April 2020 when I got my old Star Wars RPG group back together during lockdown. Since then, I've played probably more than 60 hours of Starforged and Ironsworn for the channel, and having made some bold claims about this sort of thing before, I can honestly say that experience has genuinely made me a more confident and competent GM. Because Ironsworn is practically zero prep and the way I make the show is based around loose notes and improvisation, 
I found it pretty easy to apply that to running a game. But this also made me realize that Quest is not only great for new players, it's a really accessible way to learn how to GM. It gives you all the tools to learn how to run a game and find your own voice and your own style. The game itself plays really smoothly and intuitively. It uses exclusively D20s for every role and has a Powered by the Apocalypse vibe to how the results shake out. 20 is a triumph, a critical success. 11 to 19 is a success. 6 to 10, you give the players a tough choice. 2 to 5 is a failure and 1 a catastrophe. Nice and straightforward. From a GM standpoint, it was challenging to keep coming up with tough choices, although I'd done a fair bit of that by playing in a Dungeon World campaign back in the day. That said, there were a few times where I just made this a mixed success instead, if no real obvious tough choice presented itself. So that's the dice. What about the character stats? Well, the interesting thing about Quest is there aren't any. You don't roll against or add any stat. Everyone just rolls the same dice and the same results are possible every time. So what's the point in having rolls? Well, Quest's class system is based around powerful, unique abilities, and these come printed on cards, and each player starts with six. Each ability has an associated cost known as adventure points. These are a resource the same way as hit points, but unlike hit points, these do not replenish quite as easily. You can earn them back between sessions or at the guide's discretion, but once you spend them, they're gone. Each character starts with 10 adventure points, and you can use them to trigger the abilities on the cards, and these can be very powerful. But the players must balance the cost versus the reward. When you only have 10 points across the adventure, you have to choose carefully. The spy, for example, can use their persona ability to convincingly impersonate someone else. For two adventure points, you can pass for a commoner, but for six, you can pass for a wealthy diplomat or noble. It's a powerful effect, but that is the majority of your adventure points gone in one go. And this system is fantastic. The abilities are all flavoursome and thematic, and with six abilities from the off, the players have plenty of options. And as you move through a campaign, you can level up and gain new abilities in sort of a skill tree type system, with some abilities unlocking more powerful forms. And if you play for long enough, you can even upgrade to a handful of legendary abilities. It's really intuitive and simple and elegantly designed, which is definitely how I would characterise Quest as a whole. So the adventure we played was a blast. We had an ancient shape-shifting naturalist, which is sort of the druid class, I guess. Um, we had the least surreptitious spy you could ever imagine, and a Ziggy Stardust-inspired illusionist. This motley crew arrived in town, did some snooping around, rubbed shoulders with some downtrodden fortune hunters, and encountered a wealthy merchant who doubled the reward for finding her missing son, who had left in search of the fallen star a week ago, never to be seen again. The only ones foolish enough to take this suicide mission are heroes, head into an ancient forest, solve an intricate puzzle, fight a pack of giant forest spiders, and then finally track down the merchant's son and the fallen star, and cruel, cruel person I am, I built the action to a thrilling cliffhanger and then left the players dangling because this was a one shot, right? But I wanted to show them the appeal of tabletop role playing games and why people play them. The idea that you play to find out what happens and then come back next week and pick it up again. They started the night looking at me blankly, not quite sure what to do or how any of it worked. And then by the end, they were so engaged and invested and desperately wanting to find out what happened. Most importantly, they got it. Look, Quest isn't for a hardened group of experienced players. Sure, anyone can find it fun, but for those wanting a little more crunch or depth, are better catered for elsewhere, and experienced players might lose interest in this after a handful of sessions. Quest is a springboard. It's a gateway game. What Quest does not only opens the door, it holds your hand and walks you right up to it before pushing you through to find out what is inside for yourself. If you ever find yourself wanting to run something for a group of first-timers or kids or tabletop role-playing game sceptics, then Quest is one hell of a place to start. And also, if you and your regular group want a rules-light, diversionary mini-adventure to play for a few weeks to break things up, then Quest can totally accommodate that. You can prep it and start playing in about an hour. And it flows so easily. It is a joy to both play and run. So that was my look at Quest. Like I said, the link to download it for free is in the description below, so fill your boots. If you've enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe if you've not done so already. And if you really want to support the channel, then why not check out the Bad Spot Patreon? Normal service will resume next week with the next part of the Iron Sworn mini campaign. But until then, it is farewell and safe passage.